Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day and welcome to Valley Creek Church. We are so grateful to have you with us here today. And it's a special day because we get to celebrate every woman in this place. And so whether you're here and you're a grandmother or a brand new mom, or maybe you're a spiritual mom or even a single mom, it doesn't matter where you are on your mothering journey, we just want you to know today that you are loved, that you are valued, and that we believe the best is yet to come in your life. You see, here at Valley Creek, we always honor and celebrate women. We believe that God's given women unique gifts, callings, and abilities to advance his kingdom. And that's why if you're around here for any period of time, you will see women empowered to lead and to serve and to use those gifts to the fullness of their potential. I'm so grateful to be a part of a church like that, and I'm so grateful I get to raise my daughter in a church like that. And so today, would you join me in honoring every single woman that's here on Mother's Day? Let's let them know how much we love them. So check this out. In Ephesians 6.2, it says, Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. We are literally commanded to honor our moms. And did you know that it is the only commandment with a promise? And the promise is that it would go well in your life. So here's what I'm saying. If you want it to go well in life, you've got to honor your mom. And all the moms know that this is true, right? So here's what I want you to do. I know normally we ask you to put your cell phones away. Would you take your cell phones out for a minute? Because we want to put this verse into practice. So take your cell phone out, and we're going to text the moms in our life. So go ahead and send a text to your mom. Maybe it's your grandma or an aunt, a mentor, a spiritual mom. Just take a moment to text them and let them know how grateful you are for them. And as a reminder, if you haven't already done this, in the atrium after service, we have a photo booth. So don't miss the opportunity to take a picture and you can send that text as well because we all know that moms love pictures of their kids and grandkids. So send that text. If you're not participating and your mom's sitting right next to you right now, you really need to send that text because they're sitting here waiting. We got that Find My iPhone app. We know where you are. We know what you're doing. It's a mom thing. All right, so go ahead and finish that up. And here's the good news. By simply taking a minute to honor the moms in your life, not only are you valuing and celebrating them, but you're activating God's promise that it would go well with you. So go ahead and finish that up. And as you put your phones away, on this Mother's Day, I just want to share some thoughts with you on hope. You see, here at Valley Creek, we've been talking about being a movement of hope, hope carriers. But it's hard to give hope to other people when we don't have hope for ourselves. Check out Isaiah 40, 31. It says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. In other words, those who hope in the Lord will thrive. They'll thrive in their identity, in their relationships, and in their purpose. They hope. And I want you to notice the way the word hope is used in this verse. It's used as a verb, and this is really important. See, I've been spending a lot of time this year with my third grader diagramming sentences for English, okay? And we're learning how not only is it important to know what word is being used, but to know how it's being used. And here at Valley Creek, we talk a lot about hope as a noun. You all remember a noun is a person, place, or a thing. Well, we've said hope is a person and his name is Jesus. He's someone that we receive. But in this verse, hope is being used as a verb. It says those who hope in the Lord. It's an action. It's active hope. It's not something you're waiting for. It's something you're choosing to walk in. So just like you serve or you lead or you pray, you're invited to hope so that you can be strengthened in life, so that you can soar. Okay, so think about it like this for a minute. We can receive prayer, like the noun, okay? You may come up after service and you pray with someone and there's this exchange that takes place and you receive prayer. But then you can pray as a verb, actively advancing in the authority that God's given to you. And so I receive prayer and then I pray. And it's the same with hope. You see, we can receive the hope of Jesus, but then we can actively hope like the action, and that requires our participation. And that is the journey of faith. 
Like that's what it's all about. If you only get one thing out of this message, it's active hope is what it's all about. You see, because it's active hope that allows you to advance in life. It's active hope that allows you to be strengthened, to run and not grow weary, to soar. Active hope. That's what it's all about. So don't get confused when life feels hard and you don't know what to do. Just remember active hope. It's kind of like the hokey pokey. Does anybody know that song? <laughs> like you put your right foot in, you put your left arm or foot somewhere, you put your whole self. I hope you know it because I don't. And I remember as a kid watching people do, do it and most of the time I had no idea what was going on. It looked like pure chaos. But the clue I gave myself is when I heard the phrase, put it all together, that was my cue to turn it all around and then I'd be fine because in the hokey pokey, that's what it's all about. Just turn yourself around and you're good, you're good. Okay, that's what active hope is. is. Isaiah's telling us when life gets confusing and you feel lost and you can't put anything together, just stop. Maybe turn yourself around once. The jazz hands are optional. <laughs> but fix your eyes on Jesus. Choose to actively hope. Like that's what it's all about. It's active hope that allows you to move forward in your life. So they can call it the hokey pokey. For today's purposes, we're going to call it the hopey pokey. <laughs> All right? And you know you're going to remember it now, okay? It's active hope moving forward in life. This is why he only lets me up here about once a year. Okay, so active hope. So what's the greatest thing that you can do for your heart this Mother's Day or any day? You can hope. You can actively hope and advance in life. But see, when I say that, I think a lot of us struggle with the idea of hoping because it's really hard to measure or quantify. I know what leading is, I know what serving is, but hoping? Well, hoping is simply this. Active hope is moving forward in life, regardless of circumstances, because of God's goodness. Yeah. That's active hope. Yeah. So hoping is expecting the goodness of God. It's not sitting around waiting for my circumstance to change or waiting for the world to change. Hoping is choosing to believe and speak what God says is true not believing my own perceptions and speaking out what I think is true. Okay, hoping is surrendering and trusting in God. It's not taking control and trusting in my own abilities. And hoping is moving forward in your faith, not waiting back in fear. Yeah. That's active hope. Yeah. Like let's say, for example, you're here today and there is a broken relationship in your life. Well, passive hope would have you waiting for that person to change or apologize, maybe see your perspective. But active hope, like hope as a verb, is praying for that person and choosing to stay healthy and set boundaries in your life so that you can love them well. It's speaking God's word and believing it over their life. It's owning your part. It's going to counseling and getting support. It's continuing to live free despite the choices that they're making. Active hope. It's moving forward in life, regardless of circumstances, because of God's goodness. Or let's say you're here and you're struggling with a health issue. Well, passive hope would be waiting till you feel better, maybe waiting till you get a better doctor's report. But active hope, like hope as a verb, is praying for your health. It's, it's taking care of your body in whatever way that God's asked you to. It's declaring and speaking God's word over your health, and it's believing that God is the one who has numbered your days so you can choose to rest and enjoy today. Active hope. It's moving forward in life regardless of circumstances because of God's goodness. That's hoping. And Isaiah says when we hope in the Lord, we renew our strength. Renew. It means we get strong all over again. We know in the Bible it tells us that when we receive Jesus, the person, the noun, we're given strength, supernatural strength. But then life happens and there's realities and disappointments. And so we need this refilling of strength. And that's what moving forward with active hope does. What he's telling us is it's like a supernatural recharging of your spirit, okay? Like think about your phone for a second. Does everybody have a phone? <laughs> We rely on our phone. Like when my phone is dead, I'm like, I don't know how am I going to get through today. And we all know that we have to recharge that thing every night if we want it to be used for its intended purpose. And the same is true for you. You see, 
actively hoping is like supernatural recharging your spirit. Choosing to move forward in life regardless of circumstances because of God's goodness is like getting plugged in and filled back up with strength from God so that you can live the life you were created for. It's something we need every single day. Does that make sense? And you see, when I say hope as a verb, like we need to hope as a verb, I'm not talking about worldly hope. I'm talking about kingdom hope. And they're very different things. You see, worldly hope is something that you wish for. Like, I hope the Cowboys win the Super Bowl. And I bet some of you do too. But that's worldly hope. Because it's expectation of a circumstantial change. And worldly hope is based on feelings. It's what we want and it's what we desire. And worldly hope is passive because it usually requires the participation of someone else or something else. But you see, kingdom hope is very different. Kingdom hope is this. It's the confident expectation of God's goodness in my life. And kingdom hope has nothing to do with feelings or circumstances. Kingdom hope is being in the middle of a circumstance that's saying one thing, yet I'm choosing to speak and declare something completely different. Kingdom hope is active. It doesn't require the participation of anybody else. You see, think about Abraham for a minute. Do you guys remember Abraham? He's called by God. God tells him he's going to be the father of many nations. And here he is. He's 100 years old. His wife, Sarah, is 90. They don't have kids yet. But look at what this verse says about Abraham's response to the reality of the circumstances. In Romans 4.18, it says, Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him. Okay, against all hope. In other words, even when worldly hope and wishful thinking and feelings were out the window, like they were long gone. Has anybody been there before? He says, still, still he actively hoped as a verb, he moved forward in life regardless of circumstance because of God's goodness. Like he didn't wait around for his circumstances to change because that's not what he was looking for. It goes on to say in Romans 4.20, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened. He was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he promised. And let's just be honest, Abraham's life was complicated. I mean, God clearly said one thing, and the reality looked like something completely different, and so it didn't make sense. He probably felt lost and confused, and he couldn't put anything together if he tried, and so he stopped he acknowledged his situation, and he turned himself around. He did a little hopey pokey. He chose to fix his eyes on Jesus, and it says he actively hoped, and so he was strengthened. Like he loved his wife, he served his God, he woke up every day and worked with joy and peace. He chose to believe and to speak out what God said, and there was great freedom in that. And see, I think a lot of times we get stuck because we're waiting around for worldly hope. Like we're waiting for changed circumstances and nothing can deplete you of your strength like waiting. It literally removes all your strength from your spirit, but Jesus says you're looking for the wrong thing. You don't have to wait anymore for circumstances to change, to live a life of peace and purpose because you, as you actively hope, you will be changed. So you will be strengthened. This is exactly what happened to Abraham. You see, he hoped, so he changed. Active hope. It's not natural. It's supernatural. That's why it requires faith. You see, we cannot move forward in life on our own when life throws us hard circumstances. And so Abraham, he hoped, and he was strengthened. That's what Abraham did, and that's what God's inviting us to do. Or how about Habakkuk? You remember him? First of all, he has an awesome name. And secondly, he was a prophet that was smack dab in the middle of a really difficult season. One that many of you are probably familiar with. The kind that maybe some of you are in today. And here's what he said about it. He said, though the cherry trees don't blossom and the strawberries don't ripen, Though the apples are worm-eaten and the wheat fields stunted, though the sheep pens are sheepless and the cattle barns empty. Kind of sounds like a bad country song. <laughs> cattle barns are empty, everything's going bad. 
I'm singing joyful praise to God. I'm turning cartwheels of joy to my Savior God, continue, counting on God's rule to prevail. I take heart and I gain strength. You see, he moved forward in life, regardless of circumstances, because of God's goodness. This version says he actually cartwheeled forward in life, but either way, he didn't ignore what was going on in front of him. In fact, he faced it every morning when he woke up. He, when he woke up, he saw all these things going on, but he made a decision to say, you know what? I'm going to stop. I'm going to turn myself around. I'm going to fix my eyes on Jesus, and I'm going to actively hope. And here's how I see it playing, or playing out in his life. He chose to stay in his lane. Okay, this was the lane of active hoping. And so every day he just chose to t- take one step forward. I'm going to actively hope. And world, you can stay over in this lane. So whatever is happening with the strawberries and the sheep and the barns and all the things, that's not my lane. I don't have control over that. And in fact, what I'm looking for can't be found in that lane anyways. It's active hope. That's what Habakkuk did. He hoped and he was strengthened. And that's what God's inviting us to do. So let me just ask you this question today. Do you hope? Do you hope? Okay, not do you have hope, because if you're here and you have Jesus, you have hope, because he lives in you, and he is hope. But do you hope? Do you hope as a verb? Like, are you moving forward in your life, regardless of circumstances, because of God's goodness to you? If you're not, Jesus just wants to activate your hope today, on Mother's Day. Maybe it's time to stop, to turn around, Do the hokey pokey and fix your eyes on Jesus because he's here and he wants to strengthen you where you need it most. And so to make this practical, I just want you to think of a specific area in your life today where you need hope. The area in your life where God's plan seems so far outside of what you thought it would look like. Maybe the prayer that wasn't answered or the relationship that wasn't restored or the body that wasn't healed. Or maybe you're here today and you just have an area in your life where you don't expect good things. That place you say, that's just the way it's always gonna be. Okay, that's hopelessness. And see, any area of life where we have no hope or where we're stuck, it's under the influence of a lie. Because in Jesus, there is always hope. So see, you may feel hopeless because of the circumstance you're in, but you stay hopeless because of the lies that you're believing. Okay, you may feel hopeless because of the circumstance you're in today, but you stay hopeless because of the lies that you're believing. But you see, Jesus wants to show up in your life today and speak truth to activate hope. Like that's what he did. Every time Jesus had an encounter with someone, he would speak truth to whatever lie it was that they were believing and would activate their hope. So his love would replace their fear. His vision would replace their blindness. His joy would replace their grief. You see, Jesus always exposes the lies of the enemy. Or another way to say it is hope exposes hopelessness. Listen, this is why we gather as the church. Because we believe that when you encounter the presence of God, you experience hope. Why? Because he is our hope. And when he shows up, he speaks the truth about who you are, who he is, and what you were created for so that you can be strengthened in life week after week so that you can soar. Listen, this is why all of this here, all of this is a big deal. Like it's why we show up. Some of you are like, I'm just here because it's Mother's Day. I'm here for the picture and the cookies. (laughs) That's okay. And some of you are like, no, my mom literally made me come. Like, she forced me to be here. Also okay, because as I said earlier, by honoring your mom, you're activating God's promise in your life that it would go well with you, okay? But I get it. I know our lives are busy, and we've got a million things going on, and there's a million reasons not to be here. And if I'm completely honest, there are times I don't want to come and gather around hope because I'm struggling, or maybe I'm tired or discouraged, or maybe circumstances in my life just don't look the way I hoped they would. But then I'm reminded that this is active hope. 
Like this right here is part of what Isaiah is talking about. Because one of the main ways that we hope as a verb is by choosing to gather around Jesus as our hope. Like right here in this room right now, there's thousands of circumstances represented that we are all facing. And this is telling us that against all hope, we in hope gather as the church so that we can move forward in life regardless of circumstances because of God's goodness, because we can't do it alone. Anytime you've moved through hopelessness is with Jesus and with others. So this is why we gather. This is why we worship. This is why we hear the word of God spoken over our lives. This is why the Bible says faith comes by hearing. Present, active tense, not hearing five months ago or hearing five years ago. Faith comes by hearing over and over again. And so gathering as the church is part of what it means to actively hope. That's why it says in Hebrews 10, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful and let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing but encouraging one another. So you may not feel like it, you may not see it, but every time you choose to gather around the hope of Jesus, it's like in your own life, you are choosing to stop, turn yourself around, Fix your eyes on Jesus so that you can leave this place today on Mother's Day strengthened in whatever broken relationship or difficult circumstance that you're facing so that you can run and not grow weary so that you can soar. You see, Jesus wants to be your hope and he wants to speak truth to the lies you've been believing that are keeping you from moving forward in life regardless of circumstance because he's good. So it's time to be strengthened. It's Mother's Day and it's time to activate your hope. Like maybe you're here today and you are just tired. And you've started to believe a lie that you don't have enough strength in you to hope. But you see, even in stress and exhaustion, God wants to meet you. He wants to strengthen you and supernaturally recharge your spirit. And so sometimes active hope means coming to him, no matter how tired you are, saying, Lord, I need your strength. Active hope, moving forward in life, regardless of circumstances, means going to God when I'm tired because he is my strength. Active hope. Or maybe you're here and you have believed a lie that you have lost your identity. Like, I don't even know who I am anymore. How can I actively hope? Being Mother's Day, I think every mom can relate to this, right? Like, I think everyone has an identity of crisis of sorts when they become a mom. Because when you become a mom, your worldly identity does change. But your kingdom identity never does. And so, listen, I remember times after having my kids that I would be like, I don't even know who I am anymore. (laughs) Like, I miss the old me. I used to do fun things and and be smart and, like, focused. And now I, I, like, cook for people and I manage people's sleeping schedules. Like, who am I outside of taking care of someone else? Have you ever felt like that when your worldly identity changes? Maybe when you retire or your kids move out or you change jobs? Like, who am I now? Well, active hope means moving forward regardless of the season I'm in, living like what God says about me is actually true. Living like I am secure, I am significant, and I am loved even if I don't feel like it. It's active hope. Or maybe you're here and you're lonely and you just feel distant from God today and you have believed a lie that you are on your own. Nothing could be further from the truth. The truth today is that God's with you right now and he has been with you every step of the way and he wants real relationship with you so you can move forward in hope. See, that's why knowing about Jesus and hearing about Jesus is very different from being in real relationship with him. They're about as different as a real friend and a social media friend. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you can hear about Jesus, maybe even attend a grow class, right? Become a follower. Like Jesus, I know him. We've got eight mutual friends. I just saw he walked on water last week. Hashtag faith goals. Jesus, he's my pal. But real life relationship is this. Jesus, do I know him? I'm with him all the time. Without him, there would be no way I'd be where I am today. He's what keeps me moving forward every single day. He is hope. You see, that's why when you try to find hope without Jesus, you will feel lost and lonely. 
And that's why reading another book or doing the latest self-help trend or listening to the advice of a friend won't always give you the hope you're looking for because only Jesus can. You see, worldly mantras are great. I love them until they're not. Like, you're going to be okay until you're not okay. And you've got this until you don't got this. And you can't stop, won't stop until, oh, you can stop and you did stop. You definitely (laughs) stopped, stopped way back there. But kingdom hope in relationships looks a little bit more like this. You're going to be okay because God loves you. And you've got this. And even if you don't, he does. And you're going to get through this. And even on the days when you feel like you have to stop, his love and his promises over your life can't stop and they won't stop. It's active hope. It's moving forward in life regardless of circumstances by looking to him for friendship and peace when I feel alone because he's with me and I'll start to be strengthened and sore. Finally, maybe some of you are here and you just feel like there's no real purpose in your life. And it's really hard to hope when you don't have purpose. I mean, do you remember Mary, Jesus' mother? Yes? She's a young girl with dreams of living this life of purpose and significance. So she had it all planned out. I'm going to go to this school. I'm going to marry this person. I'm going to have this many kids. I'm going to work for this company. She was set. And then one day in Luke chapter 1, an angel shows up and pretty much says, Mary, don't panic, don't freak out, don't stress because God's with you but you've been picked to birth the savior of the world. Okay, talk about a shocker. (laughs) She had her whole life planned out and then everything changes. Has that ever happened to you? Like what your life looks like now isn't actually anything like you planned? Or maybe just the season you're in now doesn't look anything like you had planned, but look at how she responds in verse 38. It says, may it be to me as you have said. In other words... I'll embrace the unknown. I'll move forward. I will hope. You see, Mary believed that the greatest purposes of her life would come from surrender and obedience. And she was right. I mean, think about this. She was the first hope carrier. Now, I want you guys to catch this. Like, she was literally the first (laughs) hope carrier. Like, she carried hope inside of her so we can learn something from her. And yeah, you know what? Life did not turn out the way she had planned at all. But she was willing to say, yes, Lord, let it be to me as you have said. In other words, whatever role you've got for me, I'm in. You know, just recently, my daughter auditioned for the play Aladdin, and she really wanted the lead role of Jasmine. So she practiced for the role, she prepared for the role, and she auditioned for that role And sure enough, the cast list came out, and she was given the role of the magic carpet. Okay? Which, if you haven't seen the movie, spoiler alert, basically means you have no lines, and you're dressed in a way to kind of blend in with the backdrop. So she comes out of rehearsal, and I am fully equipped for an on-site grief counseling session. I'm ready. And she runs out and says, Mom, I get to be the magic carpet. She was actually excited, right? So she goes on to say, Mom, don't you get it? Aladdin can't fly without the magic carpet. He can't soar. He can't even rescue Jasmine without the carpet. Active hope. And in that moment, I realized when we embrace our role wherever we are, even if it's not what we planned for, we give hope to those around us and we help others soar You see, when you surrender to God's purposes for your life, active hope, when you stop and turn yourself around, you help other people soar. You help your friends and your spouse and your kids. And guess what? In the process, you soar too. See, Jesus' whole life purpose was laying his life down so that we could soar. And now we get to do the same. So sometimes you want to be Jasmine and not the magic carpet. But active hope means moving forward in life regardless of circumstances by choosing to say, yes, Lord, let it be to me as you have said. Surrender to his plans for your life even when it's not what you planned. Active hope. And you'll start to be strengthened and you'll help others soar too. 
So today on this Mother's Day, it's a great day to move forward with active hope because he's gonna strengthen you when you're tired. He's gonna remind you of who you are when you've forgotten. He'll be with you when you feel like you're on your own and he will remind you of your purpose when you think your purpose is lost. That's what Jesus does because he is hope. So you've received him, so now it's time to hope. It's time to stop, turn around, fix your eyes on Jesus. It's time to do the hopey pokey, okay? <laughs> to move forward in life regardless of circumstances because God's been good to you. Yeah. And so let me just close with this. Have you ever noticed that kids like to dress as superheroes? Anybody ever see this? Like I'm checking out at the store this week and the entire Avengers squad is behind me, the four and under version. And it's awesome because that's what kids do. Everything is an adventure and they're ready to fly. They've got their cape on and they believe that they can do impossible things. And parents know they never seem to get tired, right? Like ever, <laughs> ever. And you know what? They fall and they hurt and a lot of things get broken and they don't always get what they want. But you know what else? They still get back up every day and put that cape back on. They continue to fly active hope. They hope as a verb. They soar in life. And that's what God's created and called you to do this Mother's Day. Like that is you. In Jesus, you are a superhero. You're a superman, you're a superwoman, and you've been given supernatural strength. You were created for a life of joy and of adventure. And guess what? Sometimes you're going to fall, and sometimes you're going to get hurt, and sometimes things aren't going to go exactly as you had planned. But in Isaiah 40, 31, it says that if you choose to turn yourself around, get back up again each day, and hope in the Lord... You will renew your strength. You will soar on wings like eagles. You will run and not grow weary. You will walk and not be faint. So maybe it's time to activate your hope. So let me just ask you this one more time. Do you hope? Not do you have hope. Because if you have Jesus, you have hope. But are you moving forward in your life, regardless of circumstances, because God is good to you. So would you close your eyes with me? And would you just ask on this Mother's Day, God, what is it that you want to say to me today? Maybe there's a place in your life where you're weary and he's inviting you to hope again. And maybe for some of you, you've been believing a lie that's keeping you from moving forward in hope. So just ask the Holy Spirit, what is the lie that I've been believing? And for some of you, today on Mother's Day is the time to say, Lord, I choose to hope again. I surrender this situation and I choose to actively hope and move forward in my life with strength and with joy. And so, Father, I just thank you for every single person in this room. And I thank you that where you are, there is always hope. And so would you be hope for each person wherever they need it. I pray that each person would lead today strengthened in their heart, ready to soar, that they would be renewed, and that they would walk out of here full of the hope and the life that you've given to them. Lord, we love you and we thank you for hope. And it's in your name we pray, amen.